Hey guys, good morning. A uh, bit of a different format going on here. Uh, you guys have probably already noticed. Uh, I figured you guys were getting tired of the normal talking head videos. So we're going to play around with some new stuff here. Enjoy. So you may have noticed a new little splash screen graphic at the beginning of this video. That's to try to get people to stop asking for support on YouTube. It is probably one of the worst ways to get a hold of me and get support because there is no way I can get detailed information or logs through YouTube comments. Not to mention there's hundreds of videos on my channels and I'm not going to keep tracking all of them and where each individual issues are and all that stuff so support is why I decided to have our own website uh, we also have documentation and stuff on there a lot of the things that people ask I've already covered in such depth that I've actually written up separate support documentation for it for instance every week I still get somebody asking me what is exclusive mode and how do I fix it? But enough of that. Let's get into what's going on with Input Mapper this week. So you may have noticed another patch came out. Um, this is just kind of a stepping stone uh, to get rid of a couple bugs that have been brought up to me. Um, and I had to kind of disable a couple other things that I was working on to hurry up and get this out to kind of fix those bugs. But uh, one of the new things that is included in this is the ability for plugins to have their own settings and this is going to be important going forward because uh, I'm going to start working on creating wrappers for plugins right now they're just kind of part of the program and they're directly interacting with the program but they're not organized in any smart way inside the program and that's going to be a problem going forward for people that want to, within Input Mapper, possibly enable or disable plugins or add external plugins, etc. So, what I need to do is I need to create a wrapper that contains the plugin and all the information about it, as well as all the settings, and have that stored within Input Mapper rather than an instance of each plugin itself. Another big bug that I'm going to be focusing on is the uh, backup of output reports that are going to DualShock 4 and uh, Xbox 360 devices. Um, it seems to be that some mid to lower range computers, uh, they don't like the frequency of reports that are going out and they start to actually build up in a queue. And after like 30 or so minutes, this queue can actually become noticeable in a form of huge input lag and latency and can even cause like stuttering across uh, audio devices and stuff like that anything that uses uh, deferred procedure calls so one of the things I gotta do is figure out a way to uh, flush an existing queue and to just use most recent reports so that's something I'm gonna be working on um, as soon as possible that's probably the next biggest thing that I'm gonna focus on uh, because I want, you know, having having a stable experience for longer than 30 minutes is obviously very important to the program. So if people are having issues with that, I need to correct that as soon as possible. So I'm hoping to have a fix for that uh, within the next few days, possibly the beginning of next week. So Along with devices being able to have settings now, I've already made use of this with the PlayStation 4 controller plugin, which is what used to be the DualShock 4 plugin. Uh, but the name has changed now because it can obviously handle more than just the DualShock 4. So this plugin uh, can now accept third party controllers so long as the reporting method that they use is the same as the DualShock 4. And to enable these third party controllers, you need to be able to input your vendor ID and hardware ID of the device and this is now done through the settings and you do that through the application settings and you'll see a plugin settings tab 
and the PlayStation 4 uh, PlayStation 4 controller settings will be one of the options in there. And you just add your vendor ID, hardware ID in the same pattern that you see the other ones. And when you restart Input Mapper, any third-party controllers that are compatible should work with the plugin as well. In keeping with trying to make the website a portal for help and support, the documentation is going to start getting uh, more focus once again as more of the features in Input Mapper, specifically the UI and how to navigate it, are getting polished off at this point. Um, on top of that, one of the things that that includes is being able to easily access this documentation and support from within Input Mapper. And to that extent, since we already have a, uh, a web browser um, as part of Input Mapper, which is part of how you log in using the OAuth uh, authentication system, um, that's actually a little miniature web browser. Uh, you've probably seen uh, other programs make use of the same kind of thing. If you use uh, NVIDIA's GeForce Experience where it pops up and asks you to log in, that's a little web browser using their OAuth authentication. So we've taken a cue from that, we do the same thing. But anyway, since we already have this web browser as part of the program, we're also going to make use of it to display in-application help and support documentation, stuff like that, possibly even a troubleshooter once I get around to finish writing that um, within the program that's pulling this live documentation from the website. And to do that I'm gonna you know play around with the website some, um, create a template that's more uh, you know not looking so much like a website but more like an actual documentation um, so what it'll do is it'll take the data that we already have and just kind of template it and display it in a more simplistic manner. Uh, it'll get rid of all the website um, fluff and stuff that you don't actually need in application documentation. So uh, that's one of the things I'm working on. Um, that hopefully shouldn't take too much longer uh, to actually implement it. But then actually writing the documentation is a bit more tricky. Um, some of it will probably include video uh, walkthroughs and tutorials as well. Um, as I, you know, decide, you know, what's the most important things I should hit on, uh, what areas are people having the most common trouble with. Um, obviously, initial setup and mapping and all that stuff, people still seem to be pretty confused how Input Mapper 1.7 works regarding that. So that's probably going to be the first tutorial I make. Um, at least video wise um, but other than that the rest will come as you know as I see the need for it and hopefully eventually we'll have a fairly flushed out documentation system that people can either make use of or more likely probably just ignore and still try to get me on discord so that's gonna do it for this week guys let me know in the comments below whether or not you like this new format or if you preferred staring at my ugly mug the whole time. Um, I'm going to try to get some different gameplay footage. Um, I actually have a backlog of games that I haven't gotten around to playing yet uh, just because I've been so busy. Um, I, I haven't even played Metal Gear Solid. Uh, so, I don't know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll play around with that. Maybe I'll play some Red Dead Redemption too. Who knows? Um, but gives me an excuse to actually play a video game. All right, guys. Well, I'll see you next week. Have a good one.